Good day! My name is Keith Brian Kundino, a Better Lead HA1A student, and my instructor for this course or subject was Ms. May Golda Bakaris. So today, we are going to tackle about the principles and strategies of teaching and designing for gifted and talented learners. So gifted and talented learners often go unnoticed in classroom, often waiting for peers pacing or engaging in unnecessary activities. Mismatch between their abilities and curriculum can waste their potential. So in this chapter, we are going to explore provisions for gifted and talented learners through classroom teaching principles and strategies. The Department of Education in the Philippines, through the Deputy Order No. 72, implemented a comprehensive inclusive program in 2009 known as the Inclusive Education Strategy to increase participation rates for children with disabilities and giftedness and talent with the following components. So the first component is Child Find. So it is about locating learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents who are not in school through the family mapping survey, advocacy campaigns, and networking with local health workers to be enrolled in special education centers or school nearest to their home. Second is assessment, a continuous process of identifying the strengths and limitations of learners with disabilities giftedness and talents through the use of formal and informal tools for level placement with the help of existing SPED centers. Third is program options. Schools with or without trained SPED teachers shall make education accessible to learners with disabilities. The program options are as follows. Self-contained class for learners with similar disabilities or conditions inclusion or placement of learners in general education or regular class and resource room. Fourth component is the curriculum modifications. This means using adaptations and accommodations in classroom instructions and activities and delivery options. Fifth component and the last component was the parental involvement. So this is involving parents or guardians in observing their child's performance volunteering as teacher aide in the classroom, and serving as academic, moral, and spiritual support to their child. And now, we're going to talk about the program option. So according to Davis, Rehm, and Siegel Year 2014, this involves simple to complex ways such as a teacher providing additional instructional materials to those who finish lessons tasks easily. Next, Enriching the curriculum by teachers supplying extra time for bright students to work at a resource, centers, or interest-based project. Next is the part-time acceleration to a higher grade for one or two subjects. Fourth, full-time acceleration or grade skipping. Fifth, cluster grouping of all gifted learners at each grade level in a single classroom for special services. Sixth, implementing school-wide plans to accommodate every gift to learners in every regular classroom. Seventh, implementing follow-out programs. Eighth, conducting part-time special gifted classes. And ninth, assigning full-time special gifted classes at every grade level. And tenth, opening special schools for the gifted. So with all of these alternatives, one must consider all pertinent issues and concerns in planning the best program for these gifted and talented learners. Rhys Westberg Kolekovic and Purcell Year 1998 underscored four principles of enrichment, teaching, and learning. So first, they underscore that each student is different. So there is no student who are the same because every student have their own uniqueness on how to catch up the lesson from their teacher easily. Second, learning is more effective when students enjoy what they do. So if the students don't enjoy or don't adapt the environment of the school, then they are not going to learn more about the lessons. Third, 
Learning is more meaningful when students learn content and process while solving a real problem. So, you can apply here the UBD by the depth or the understanding by design, in which um, they are given visual aids or activities wherein they are going to solve some problems that they can apply in their real life. Next, Whereas some formal instruction is necessary, a major goal is promoting knowledge and, and thinking skills by the application of what students have learned, because students construct their own meaningfulness. So there are three grouping options provided to these learners. We have full-time homogeneous grouping, full-time heterogeneous grouping, and part-time or temporary group. So we are going to tackle what are inside those three groupings and how it can help the students with learning disabilities, giftedness, and talents. So first is a full-time homogeneous grouping. So we can find here the special schools for the gifted. So it offers a curriculum based on Department of Education guidelines in which in an academic scientific, artistic, and other areas of development. So examples for this include Philippine High School for the Arts, which combines general secondary programs with a special arts curriculum for gifted learners. Next is the special classes. It is a school within a school program where gifted children attend full-time classes at the elementary level. Under Department of Education, these classes cover grade level objectives and offer enrichment, personal development, and advanced classes. The Head Start program for the gifted addresses the educational, aesthetic, and social needs of preschoolers who manifest superior abilities expected above their age. Next is the full time heterogeneous grouping. So we have here cluster group. It refers to placing 5 to 10 high-ability students in one regular class per grade, along with other 15 to 20 regular students. So this is handled by a trained professional teacher and could be divided further in individual or small groups. Enrichment activities are used in this kind of grouping, so which include in-depth lessons on content, on metacognitive skills and collaboration, and independent learning activities which include research presentation or mastery of advanced skills in math, music, and others. So this kind of grouping is not very common in the Philippines. Next is the heterogeneous classes. So this combines prescribed and differentiated curriculum for the benefit of both regular and gifted learners. Next is the Individualized Education Plan or the IEP. So an individualized education plan is a written plan designed to achieve a learner's academic goals within a school year. It includes the learner's current skills, strengths, and challenges, learning styles, and the goals for the school year. So in this kind of grouping, Data is collected through parent conferencing, student observation, and performance analysis to determine strategies and eligibility for IEP. So not all gifted and talented learners and LSEN require IEP. Evaluating the plan involves a multidisciplinary team of professionals. In the Philippines, schools are not legally required to formulate IEPs or organize meetings, but parents or guardians can take steps to ensure their child's development. Next grouping and the last grouping was a part-time or temporary groups. So we have here pull-out programs. It involves students being pulled out of mainstream classes to participate in enrichment activities led by gifted and talented teachers. These sessions usually in a resource room where it helps them strengthen their creativity, metacognitive abilities, communication, and other personal areas of development. Next is the part-time special classes. It offers gifted and talented learners 50% to 70% of regular curriculum. 
So focusing on independent projects, research, accelerated subjects, and small group collaborations to enhance creativity and higher level thinking skills. Next is the enrichment clusters. These are groupings for learners with common interests such as journalism, literature, engineering, or baking, where they meet with experts for 6 to 12 weeks to discuss their interests in depth, including dance, history, and techniques. Next is the special interest groups and clubs. So it is uh, popular among secondary students. It offers enrichment activities in clubs like drama, chess, mathematics, and religious. So high school students, particularly in private schools, apply for membership as well as a club advisor assess their skills and abilities. So what are the enrichment strategies? So enrichment strategies are strategies for enrichment content, high order deliv delivery methods of developing skills in creative thinking, critical thinking, and problem solving. So first one is library and internet research projects. So learners with strong interest in a specific, specific topic can choose their own or brainstorm topics with a teacher and a group. They learn to triangulate data, consult multiple sources, and evaluate the validity of their references. Second, scientific research projects. This strategy involves the teacher's role as a facilitator, helping students find solutions to specific problems through discovery, collection, and investigation, showcasing them on a silence fair. Third, art, drama, creative writing, and other independent projects. Art projects involve drawing, sculpting, photography, and drama. While creative writing benefits school newspapers, online blogs, and interest groups through interviews, articles, and editing. Fourth is mentorships. Mentoring involves professionals working with school interest clubs, serving as a resource, role model, and a friend to transfer skills and attitudes to learners with similar interests. Fifth is our peer tutoring. Peer tutoring, also known as peer-assisted learning, involves learners acting as tutors to other learners, so regardless of age or level. So teachers supervise the application and training of tutors. Next and last was the questioning. So teachers can enhance critical and creative thinking skills by incorporating cognitively challenging questions in classrooms, fostering deeper thinking and intellectual growth through follow-up questions. So all of this content that I've tackled in this chapter are the methods or strategies that are being used by the teachers or our Department of Education to teach more and so that the students or learners with disabilities, gifted and talented, can have the education that they really wanted or that they really deserve. Because every children, even if you're gifted, even if you have these abilities and you have this great talent, you have the right for a proper education. Because we are talking about inclusivity and therefore education is inclusive for all. Thank you.